Welcome to Living Web Farms short evening session. This is mushroom cultivation. If you go to livingwebfarms.org, you can see all of our classes that are scheduled. The next one coming up, I highly recommend, it is foraging, how to feed off the wild. We have Doug Elliott and um, Ken Krause. Doug Elliott's pretty well known. Ken Krause isn't as well known, but he should be. He's an incredible mushroom expert. Um, cultivation too, but his main focus is wild harvesting, identification, and his wife Cindy focuses on how to cook them best. Um, I took a class with them at Sunnybank a couple of years ago and learned like four or five mushroom species that I was confident about. I increased my number of mushrooms I would collect and eat by 100% with one class. I'm expecting to get another third, third again this time, you know, and that's great fun. Basically what we're doing here is sterilizing straw. And we'll inoculate that. 181, we're there. By the time we get to it, it'll be nice and sterilized. I was able to get up with Greg here and get chicken of the woods spawn. Basically the guy who cut the tree down left about five foot of stump and then cut that into pieces. And we'll make a, like, a layer cake of wood stumps and spawn. And then we'll come back and drill some holes in it too. Put some spawn in it, you know. We're also gonna look at some spawn we never use that's kind of old. If it looks decent, we might try putting some um, mataki on the roots because the roots do better with mataki than they do with chicken. Um, and that's, that's, that's advice from Trad Cotter from Mushroom Mountain. He's been our main source of information. That's where some of the spawn comes from, but he didn't have wine cap strafaria, also known as king strafaria, or the Latin name um, strafaria rugosa annulata. That's a, one that, you, have you ever seen pictures where they're selling mushroom spawn? It's the kid holding a mushroom that's this big. They really don't taste that good at that stage. You want them small and young, but they're pretty easy. They should work. We also had all of our um, sugar maple top stuff chipped up, and we're going to combine two classes tonight because we're also going to be doing some orchard improvement while we set them up. Um, Michael Phillips came and taught a wonderful orchard class, which will be on the web pretty soon, and he teaches to pile Ramo wood chips, the wood chips from the top growth, the new growth of trees, um, like the kind of stuff that the power companies cut down, to pile those around the drip line and heighten the fungal effect on, in an orchard. And we're gonna do that tonight. We got some scoops and we have them placed strategically. We're gonna make some piles and then we're gonna work wine cap shifaria inoculum into it. It's a very simple process. And then the odds are good it'll work. That's one of the simpler ones that usually does work. Um, have you had success with that one? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I planted um, around my red raspberries this past year and the ones that had the mycelium with the wine cap did probably 34% better. The plants just look great. That's the dynamism of it, is you get mushrooms and you're releasing nutrients, the kind, just exactly the kind of nutrients that woody perennials like. They like fungal-based nutrition. And so we're combining two things there. We're gonna make the orchard healthier while we grow mushrooms. That'll be the first thing we'll do. We'll let this get a little hotter, and then we'll get a fork and scoop it out onto a table. And then once it cools, we'll inoculate that. While that's cooling, we'll probably inoculate shiitakes. The last thing we'll do is hike up the hill and do the um, chicken of the woods. And then anybody that's interested, it'll be towards dusk probably, that wants to come back and see our actual mushroom patch, we'll take you back there and show you. We did bring some of the mushroom patch here. If you turn around, you can see we soaked those logs just so you can see that the shiitakes do work. You know, um, Basically, if you soak a log for 24 hours, we do 48 because our barrels are not very deep. So we soak one side and then the other. Soak those for 24 hours about a week later. I soaked them on Monday, on a Sunday night rather. They were probably red primed to be picked yesterday. Um, about a week later, you can count on them. It is, that's probably how you do all yours, right Greg? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you're trying to control your mushroom harvest, you don't want to count on the rain because you have no control, whatever. Once in a while you get a few and then all of a sudden you get so many, so many you have to sell them for nothing. Whereas if you soak them, you can totally control when they come in. And our experience is it yours too, that is once you soak them, they rarely flush without being soaked? No. No? Yours will flush even if, even if you don't soak them? Oh yeah. Mine tend not to. And that's what um, Oman from, a, from NCANT said. He said once you soak them, you almost have to to get them to happen. Well, it all depends how long they sit around. Oh no, if they sit long enough, the a rain's gonna make them happen. But within a season, you can yeah. pretty much control it if you keep soaking them. Right. They won't really do it again until, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it is really the best way to do it. Okay, so 
First thing we're going to do, I'm going to grab the um, spawn. After I show you all, it's going to be a little hands-on work. We've got four scoops. You can take turns. We've got some piles of wood chips. We're going to make some piles right on the drip line of these trees. And then we'll all inoculate them, okay? So let's head this way.